our bedroom is officially done. 100% complete. Not like 97% because we didn't do all the trim work or I didn't cock all the moldings. It's like done, done. It's actually done now. Yeah. Not like us pretending Instagram done. <laughs> Welcome back to our channel. I'm Lindy. I'm Russell. From Love Crate Celebrate. And today we're showing off our extreme bedroom renovation. I, I thought you were gonna say extraordinary. No. <laughs> Although it is extraordinary too, considering that we added an entire bathroom and extended the closet, added a fireplace, added a vanity. Today's video is sponsored by Adapt Canada who helped us patch some holes that someone accidentally made in the wall. <laughs> well, to be fair, one was me, four were Lindy because she couldn't decide where she wanted a photo, so. So thank you, Dap, for sponsoring this video. We will show you the quickest and easiest way to patch a hole coming up. But before we could show you the end of this extreme renovation, we're gonna go back to the beginning, show you what this room used to look like. So you can hit the rewind button now. <laughs> so going back to the beginning, here's what our bedroom looked like when we moved into this house. It's actually a very large bedroom and gave us lots of opportunities to customize the space. Before we transformed it into the bedroom we wanted, we had actually painted everything white and first turned it into a bedroom for our kids. We spent a weekend transforming this room into a shared bedroom for our three kids and they stayed in here for a couple of years before we took it back as the primary bedroom. But the one feature from this space as a kids room that we kept was this black slot wall that we had done in the corner of the kids room. It's a really beautiful textural element to have a slot wall like this and it looked just as beautiful in the kids room as it does in our primary bedroom. So I'm really glad that we kept this feature but we took advantage of it even more the next year by adding a fireplace and surround in front of it. We have full videos of most of these projects and I will link them all in the description below, but here's Russ framing out and prepping the surround for the fireplace that we added into our bedroom once we moved in. We use this fireplace constantly throughout the winter here. It was definitely a worthwhile addition to the room and didn't cost us very much at all to add it. The biggest part of this primary bedroom transformation was taking the space on this side of the room and turning it into an ensuite and a walk-in closet. This is coming out and then the whole wall is gonna get put along this line on the floor here. So even though this closet is a whole nother renovation, we have to do some planning. We have to do now. some planning now because we need to build this whole wall first. Here is Russell demoing the existing structure and then rebuilding out the new wall, which included two pocket doors, one for the walk-in closet and one for our new bathroom. Adding the ensuite was definitely the biggest undertaking in this whole transformation, but totally worth it. I'm also really proud that we did everything ourselves in these spaces. The one thing we hired out was some of the drywall work because we just don't like doing it, but we are capable of doing it and we did everything else on our own to transform these spaces. A few of our custom DIYs in here included our wood ceiling, our Ikea hack vanity, and some DIY floating shelves. Mm -hmm. 
adding this ensuite to our primary bedroom is not only just aesthetically pleasing and functional, it's also an investment because I know it's gonna add value to our home to have another bathroom. So when we finished our ensuite, it's a tiny 32 square feet. We used every inch of that that we could and we couldn't come up with a way to hang our towels that would look nice and be functional. Our compromise was to put some hooks here in the bedroom. So it's right outside the bathroom, come out of the shower, whatever, and this is what we added. And because we had already built out this wall when we did the ensuite and added the pocket doors to both sides, we were now ready to finish off our IKEA walk in closet. To give this closet that built in custom look, I'm gonna add moldings to all these faces so that you don't see any of the seams. And that will really polish it and make it look not like an Ikea system, although the Ikea looks really good by itself, just this kind of brings it to the next level. We customized some Ikea PAX units and built some additional storage to make the most of this space, and then spent some time trimming everything out and painting it so it looked seamless and cohesive. And then we moved on to our last big project in here, which was my makeup vanity. Okay, so the plan is... If Lindy was a mirror, there. The plan is mirror, little desk height vanity floating, and then... Stool. Stool or bench underneath. Yeah. We are going to use resin on the vanity top, and hopefully, do a little faux marble look. Yeah, if we can get it to work. And I mean, we haven't done a lot with resin, so it'll be a bit of a DIY experiment, experiment but that's what we're all about, so. And then I'm gonna put a mirror up here You're printing it that is brass or gold or something to bring some warmth in. So we spent some time experimenting with epoxy resin for the first time and it was really fun actually and I was really impressed with how the faux marble look came out. Like we said before it was kind of an experiment for us but I would definitely try this again because it turned out so nicely and looks so realistic. At this point, our bedroom was almost done, but we had one other small detail to take care of. We actually finished this room last year, but I had a bit of an oopsie and we covered it with a photograph. Um, I had something just hit the wall. And then also we moved these photographs a couple of times. So we have some extra holes in the wall that we don't want to be there. Um, as you can see, 
Oops. So DAP actually has these really cool quick patch kits. You don't need to use mud or spackling and you don't need to sand. It's just like a sticker that you apply over it and then you take some paint and paint it twice and then it should disappear. So we are going to try that today and fix these holes in the wall. He started this process by removing the plugs that were still in the wall and then it took some time to even out all the drywall and make sure that there wasn't any that was sticking up or might interfere with us painting the wall or putting the patch on flat. All you have to do to start is take out the patch and put it down smoothly over the part of the drywall that you're patching. And then you're done. After your first coat of paint has dried, you can pull on the little blue tab to remove the top layer of the patch. So the thought process behind these, I think, is when you have the original piece that goes on, it sits out a little bit thicker, and then you paint it, you add paint around the, the edge of this, so that actually builds the paint out. We're talking really thin, but this feels pretty close to flush, and then you take this little sticker off, and then that brings the height back down, and when we paint it again, it should level out. So we'll see how it looks. Next, we just gave it a couple coats of paint, the package said that you could get away with two, but we did end up doing three or four coats because we really wanted to not be able to see those patches at all. And we found it just gave a little bit more of a seamless look. And honestly, the results are so impressive. You can't even tell where the holes are and we didn't use any spackle or putty. At this point, our bedroom was almost finished and honestly, so was our budget, but I had one last purchase to make. I really wanted some kind of chaise or lounger in the corner as a place to relax and read or watch TV. And I ended up finding one within our budget from Ikea. It was really the only option I could find under $500 that I still liked the look of. So we assembled that and put it in place. And here is how the entire primary bedroom has come together. I couldn't be happier with all of the custom finishes we've done. So much of our own labor and time went into this space, but it was definitely worth it. After more than a year of working on this space and transforming it, it's really nice to finally feel like it's finished. I've spent a lot of time relaxing in here and it was definitely worth all of the effort. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing our bedroom come together. It has been a long journey. Couldn't be happier with how it looks and how it feels and how much time I want to spend in here by myself. By yourself. Well, sometimes with him. <laughs> <laughs>
If you have any questions about our renovation, please let us know in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let us know your favorite change that we made in the comments. And as always, hit the bell so you don't miss out on future DIY and home renovation videos. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.